Hi, welcome to Stat Stuff. I'm Matt Hansen. In this lesson, we'll pick up where we left off before in the previous lesson of the DMAIC roadmap and dig a little bit deeper into a third layer of the defined phase of DMAIC. This third layer will serve like a roadmap to navigate you through the different tools and resources necessary when working in the defined phase of a DMAIC project. So let's begin by looking again at the five basic steps for resolving a problem. Well, as we talked about previously, we, we introduced the five basic steps for resolving a problem. And then we applied those five basic steps to the DMAIC methodology, the five phases of the Six Sigma DMAIC methodology. And last time in the lesson, we had also talked about the high-level questions we would ask for each of those phases in the DMAIC methodology. We also took that a step further. That's what we call level one. That is, at the top level, we have each of these different questions that we're asking for each of the phases within the DMAIC methodology. So we dug last time into taking those, those questions to another layer, a second layer, going a little deeply like this, where for the each phase, again, we've got the defined phase where we have the top level question that we're asking ourselves. And again, we said, if you cannot answer yes to that question, then you ask yourself the second layer of questions that are in here. And here's a guide for the different tools or resources that can help you in helping to answer those questions. And that can ult ultimately help you in answering this top level question. And what we said is that the goal is to try to answer each of these top level questions for each phase. And then as you do answer yes to those questions, then you move on to the next phase and then to the sub questions within those phases and so on all the way through the control phase. That's the introduction again to what we did last time when we talked about the level one and level two questions for the DMAIC roadmap. Okay, now let's dig a little deeper by looking at the third layer of the defined phase of DMAIC. Well, as you might guess, in a third layer of questions, we're taking those second level of questions and we're going one more layer deep. And we're asking ourselves even more detailed questions to help navigate us through following a project successfully. So here we have the defined phase. So for the defined phase, we have the same top level question that we're trying to answer. Do you fully understand the severity and scope of the problem? Within this one, we also have the second level of questions also duplicated within here that we talked about in the previous lesson. So now we're taking each of those second layer questions and we're going one more layer deep where we're asking ourselves some additional more specific types of questions to guide us more specifically to the tool or resource that can help us in answering that question. So as we did before, we would ask ourselves at the top level, do you fully understand the severity and scope of the problem? If you cannot answer yes, then we would ask ourselves this next second level question, can you clearly define the problem and its potential impact to the organization? Again, if you cannot answer yes to that question, then you go to this first question that's within the third layer of that. That is, can you align a problem to a corporate CTQ? Well, if you cannot or not sure what that is, then you would use the CTQ drill down to help you in answering that question. Then once you've got that, you can ask yourself the next question, can you clearly and succinctly define the pain point being felt in the organization? Well, if you cannot or you're not sure, use the problem statement to help you. Then do you have a clear and reasonable scope for focusing the project? If you're not sure, use the project scope to help you. Do you know what are the potential project benefits for the project? Well, again, if you're not really sure, then you might use the project financial savings tool to help guide you in that. Then you would ask yourself, are the minimum that is the worst case or the maximum that is the best case potential benefits worth continuing with the project? Again, if you're not really sure, don't even know what that means or how to do that, then you might refer to the project pre-assessment or like a min-max analysis to help you in answering that. Again, the idea here is once you can answer all these questions at this third, deepest level, that should help you in answering this, this question above it. Can you clearly define the problem and its potential impact to the organization? Now that you can hopefully answer that question as a yes, you move on to the next sub-question, which was, do you have a team that agrees with the project focus? If you're not sure, then you ask these next questions. Do you know who's on the team and what role they all play? And does each person on the team agree with the problem de definition and scope? That's really critical. So make sure you ask those questions of your team or as your, of yourself, at least, as you're building your team. And then you move on to the next questions. The, de the third layer deep is, do you know what the primary steps are within the process and the inputs that feed into it? Well, a high-level process map is what might guide you with that. The next question is, do you know who the suppliers and the customers are for the process? Well, if you're not really sure, again, the SIPOC is what might help you in answering that. Again, once you've moved on, you can go down the last layer of questions. Do you have a project charter? If you're not sure what that is or you know you don't have one, then you can refer to the project charter as a tool to help you with that. And then finally, do you have a project storyboard? 
If you don't, or you're not really sure what that means, again, refer to the project storyboard as a tool to help you. Again, the bottom line is that we want to answer this top level question, do you fully understand the severity and scope of the problem? Let this roadmap be a guide to help you through each of these different layers, specifically pointing you to the different tools that can help you along the way so you can ultimately answer this question for the define phase. And then you'll probably expect to have these types of outputs as your different tools or the things coming out of this define phase as you work through this. So again, once you can answer yes to all of these questions, then you're ready to move on to the next phase, the measure phase. All right, before we close this lesson, let's discuss how we can apply some of these concepts in a practical way. Well, just as we did before on the level one and level two to make roadmap, we want to do the same kind of thing now for the level three, at least with a defined phase. That is, we want you to identify at least two projects that you might have led or possibly worked on in the past. And then for each of those projects, review the questions that we talked about in the defined phase, at least those questions down to the level three layer of the roadmap. And then as you do that, Find out which questions or related tools or resources that were defined in there, which ones of those were not addressed in those projects, and why were they not addressed. And then finally, what are the different outcomes or results that you could have gotten possibly if you had addressed those particular items in the project. Well, that wraps up this lesson. Check out statstuff.com for many more resources that can help you achieve powerful results. I'm Matt Hansen. Thanks for watching.